All right, guys, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors uh, for another episode of In the First Shed series. So today we're going to uh, go step by step on how I uh, skin and put up a weasel. Um, I don't catch a lot of weasels. I'm not an expert at weasel trapping. Um, if you guys watch my Out on the Line series, uh, you'll realize that, you know, I have boxes out for a long time to struggle to catch you know weasel but you know i made made a catch again this year so we're going to uh i said go step by step kind of show you how i uh how i skin a weasel i'm sure other guys that catch a lot of them might be quicker at it and have better uh methods of doing it um i have all short tail weasels in my area i don't know honestly if i've ever seen a long tail weasel the weasel we're going to skin today may be one of the smallest weasels i've ever caught um you know, I'm assuming it's just a young of the year weasel. Um, both of the weasels I caught this year were the same size. The two I had last year were probably adults because they're like twice the size of this one. But uh, we're going to, like I said, we're going to put you on my chest mount. So hopefully you guys can kind of see. I'm going to try and make sure I'm turned the proper way and stay close enough so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, if I feel like you can't see, I'm actually going to pop you off of my chest mount and kind of show you what I'm doing or try to show you a little bit better what I'm doing. So we're going to skin this guy. Um, he's laying right here. I got my tools right here. We'll go through that in a second. But we're going to skin him and then I'm going to go over behind me on my uh, skinning table and we're going to actually, I'll show you the little bit of fleshing you need to do on weasel, if any, and then pinning him onto... Uh, an actual stretcher and putting the board in there all right so tools of the trade you can use whatever uh skinning knives you want i'm a i just use a four inch fillet knife i mean i probably lost uh probably a half an inch off of this guy over the years because i've done you know a lot of sharpening on it um probably five or six seasons i've used this one fillet knife um i also just recently got a pelter um this is the weeby pelter it, you, it's excellent on like opening up muskrats, actually opening up beavers, doing the initial cut down the middle of the belly on beavers. You know, just the way that's designed, as you push it along, you know, the fur rides up that angle and it just slices it right open. So as long as you kind of guide the point where you want it to go, it zips them right open. Weasels are, uh, you know, pretty thin skinned, let's say. Um, there's not a lot of fat, not a lot of meat on them. So something like this, I could kind of control how deep I'm going. Um, so we're going to use the pelter to kind of open them up. We're going to use the flay knife to wring the back legs and then to like go you know, around the head and cut the legs and that type of stuff. All right, guys. So here we go. So we got my weasel here. Again, he's not the biggest weasel in the world. Um, was caught in a... Uh, rat style trap in a weasel box um what i'm doing is i'm just kind of flexing them around a little bit making them a little more flexible you know they tend to kind of get riggered um he i don't know why the back of him here oh it's just wet i guess is all it, all it is so what we're gonna do is i'm actually gonna take his foot and we're just gonna lightly pinch it in my uh vice there so i can pull on that pretty good tension really Give just a little more. I don't want to like crush his foot, not that it matters, but uh, I don't really want to crush it. So then we're going to take my uh, fillet knife here and we're going to wring his leg. And I'm going to go right below like, so you got a foot and then almost like a knee. I'm going to go right below that knee joint and we're going to wring that. Okay. So you can see I got that all the way around on there. We're going to loosen them up and we're going to do that on this side. Okay. And I know there may be better ways to do this, better ways to ring it, but this is Weasels are so small and your hands are so big that's hard to really uh, 
you know, do a lot of this stuff. Okay. So I got that side rung all the way around as well. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take my pelter and we're going to go in right on the kind of the back of his leg. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pinch the leg in between my fingers here to help kind of hold it. And we're going to head directly for like the base of his tail right there. So weasels do have glands in here just like a mink does. Almost every time either I puncture one or they uh, ooze a little bit of musk out onto his out so it, it smells I I don't know how to do one without it doing that All right, we're trying just trying to be gentle here get it started okay so you can see like I said the pelter works really nice for this if I had to I could use my foie knife all right so I got that open all the way right to his tail and I know there's a lot of like swapping back and forth here, but. Okay. So I just kind of, I got it started and we're going to kind of aim right for the base of his tail there. Okay. So now I basically just got to connect from one side to the other here. I'm trying to do this without puncturing those glands because it does stink. Okay. So now I, I got below the glands all the way to his tail. Now I'm going to go, I'm actually going to use my foie knife here. We're going to go just above the, here. So what I did is I went, here's the vent in the back. I went just in front of that and I just poked my knife through. So I'm out the wag hole on one side and I'm out the wag hole on the other side here. So I'm going to just kind of hold the vent and cut. So basically I just left a little bit of fur around the vent and now he's opened right up here. All right, so we're going to carefully here get the wag started. So I'm just kind of holding the meat. And we're going to pull the wag down. Do the same thing on the other side here. And again, if you get a little of the meat on the pelt, like I said, I'm going to flesh him just a little anyway. So, all right. So you can see there's a little bit of that stuff kind of hanging on to my. Uh... Okay. And I'm trying to get all the way right to the base of his tail here. Okay. All right, you can see I kind of just made a little hole. You know, I pulled down both of his back legs until I got a little bit of a hole behind his tail here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hold his butt with this hand and I'm going to take my finger and kind of pinch it down so my fingernails are on each side of his tail here. And that's going to be my tail stripper. So we're just... Okay, you see what I did is I pulled a little bit here and it kind of rolled a little on itself there. Hope you guys could see that. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch on each side here. And I'm pinching pretty good and then now I just pulled with the other hand. So now his tail is completely open. Uh, we're gonna take care of that, opening that up here when I'm done skinning him. So now he's all the way around. I'm just lightly pulling on him. Because again, they have a pretty thin skin. And some of this kind of bloodier stuff is just from where the trap was on him. And I'm just trimming a little of that membrane. So, okay, and then we're pulling down. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. I want to make sure it goes. Okay, we're all the way to the front legs. So what I just did is I just pinched the leg and kind of twist it up like that so twist up and you can see how I basically pulled the whole wig so I just put my fingers through there and pull and then I pull you know most of the way down to the foot so the foot is only that long 
and then I go underneath it and I cut off kind of right below the foot because you don't need a real long leg on there. All right, so on this side, again, we're going to pinch the meat here. I'm kind of pinching the fur right in underneath it, and then I'm just kind of twisting and pulling back that way. We'll reposition and do it again. Okay. So, okay, now I'm just kind of pushing up with my finger. So I'm pushing up to kind of hold the leg tight, and I'm holding down with these fingers to keep this in nice tension so it cuts right through. Okay, both legs are done. We're gonna pull just a little. Okay, now we're right down to the head here. A little bit of this meat kind of stuck on there. So it didn't pull. So now I'm just taking my time, going right where like the hide meets the meat. and cutting the membrane there a little bit, making sure it keeps pulling. Should be getting real close to the ears here. So you can't pull real hard because the weasels aren't real, you know, real big, real durable. So you got to kind of almost cut more. All right. So we're right to the ear here, right here's an ear. So I try to leave more of the ear on the actual pelt than I leave on the body. I don't want to leave a huge ear hole. Okay, that's the ear right here. See that kind of cartridge and there's the hole for it. This one I cut off just a little bit closer, but. Okay, so what I'm doing is just giving it just a little pull and it got me most of the way down to the eyes here. All right, so the eyes are gonna be, the ears are kind of directly on the side of their head. The eyes are gonna be more kind of on the top of their head. So this is the bridge of his nose. His eye is right here and it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna kind of pinch on one side, you know, cause I know his eye is right there and I'm gonna cut more like towards his body rather than cutting like this. You cut like this, you're gonna cut a huge eye hole. You kind of cut towards the body and it'll, kind of make a small nice little eye hole so you're almost like cutting directly into the bone you can see there's his eye hole so we'll pinch on this side yeah I cut a little on the side of his mouth here I don't want to pull around that eye for some reason All right, I got this side looks really nice. I think he got a little bit of like frost dried almost. Because he was froze in that trap. All right, so we got around the eye or to the mouth here. So I'm kind of going around the bottom of the jaw. So right here, that's the side of his mouth. Got to get this side going here a little more. Like I said, he almost froze or freeze dried a little bit. So you don't really keep the lower whip, but I, I don't like to cut it off while I'm skinning because I feel like you tend to cut it off shorter than you maybe should. So I try to leave the lower jaw on, on all my animals when I'm skinning them. We're going to... So I turned him upside down here. We're going to kind of pinch just the lower jaw and we're going to kind of work the lower jaw around here. There we go. Lower jaw is cut off. I'm flipping back over. So I'm putting a fair amount of pressure down. You're pulling this direction down towards me. We just got to get just a touch farther here. Yeah, we're just about to his nose. So what I'm doing is just kind of weighing my knife flat like this and I'm just kind of going round and round it trying to like kind of cut out the cartilage of the nose. And I'm just about done there. They don't have a super long nose. There we go. All right, so there's our weasel skinned and ready to go. 
We'll come back to him. We'll take my knives. So like I said, he's not a very big weasel. He's not going to stretch real long. So again, my uh, this knife here is the Weeby Pelter knife. Um, I keep it actually in the box with the sheath on it when I'm not using it just to protect it. Um, we're going to split this tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay him on his belly and kind of stick him down to my table. So what I have is a piece of plexiglass on top of my table and it kind of keeps the blood off of the actual wood, you know, from staining everything. And you know, when I quick wipe with a blue rag and it cleans it right up. So we're going to split this tail and you got to be very careful because the black tip on the end is where all the money is in this whole pelt. So what I did is I just took my foie knife and I'm going to use it similar to the pelter. I don't like using the pelter for this because it's so pointy and sharp on the end that it'll actually go through the tail and open up the opposite side. So by using my fillet knife here, um, by using the fillet knife, you can see it's kind of, you know, it's flat and it's kind of blunt on the end. It ain't really sharp right on the very end of it. So I can kind of run it in along the table and it will kind of work the same as that pelter does. As it rides up, it will slice it open but it will actually keep it from poking out the opposite side. So all I did is I'm just, I got this guy kind of stuck to my table. I could clamp him back in my vise and hold him. And I'm just gonna slide my knife into the, the hole where the tailbone would be until it kind of stops. And then I'm gonna pull up. So I just cut it open, you know, like a half an inch. I'm gonna slice, slide it back in there. And I'm being kind of gentle about this. Okay, you know, and as you get down towards the end, you know, my knife will slide in there even less. So what I'm doing is I'm sliding it in just a little and then pulling up We're just about there. So I don't know if you guys can see, but it's actually split, you know, the tail is split open here. I got just a little right at the end I don't have done here. I'm not super concerned about it being perfect all the way to the very end, but it's got to be pretty close. And for some reason, I can't get... There we go. So again, I'm just trying to make sure I get it opened all the way to the very end. Because again, the black tip... If it don't have the black tip, it basically makes the weasel pelt worth almost nothing, especially to my buyer. All right, there you go. I got it open all the way to the end. Okay. So this is a weasel board from uh, Top Watch Stretcher and one of their uh, weasel uh, belly boards. Um, fairly simple. You can make your own. I actually have another one over here that I uh, cut out myself. This one works so much nicer. The only thing I did is I drill a hole in them because I hang all my fur from my rafters upside down. You know, so I'll just, I have nails in my uh, four joists, so I just hang them upside down when I'm done. Uh, you can see where I had one pinned on here already. What we're going to do is we're going to slide this guy onto my board. And that little green mark was from a marker I had on my uh, table, or on my uh, bench over there. We're being kind of gentle with them here. Oh, this side kind of rolled up. That's why I didn't slide. But you can see I put him on sideways. Because what you end up with is usually a little meat right by the wig. And a little bit right down here by the bottom. And like this stuff all scrape off too. Um, so by just sliding him on sideways, that lets me uh, get that meat flushed off of there. And then before we pin him, we'll turn him. All right, again, I got a weeby pelt scraper. It's got kind of a sharp, it's got kind of a sharp side here and a dull side. I use the sharp side, but I'm very gentle with it. Um, we're gonna grab. So we're done with the knives. So we're gonna grab a paper towel so I can just wipe the stuff off and put it on there. So again, you don't have to get too carried away. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm holding my thumb on the wig 
And we're just going to scrape just a little of that meaty stuff off. Wipe it on my uh, paper towel. And then we're going to get some kind of this bloodier stuff off of the belly here. And off the leg. So again, I don't get too carried away with when I'm splitting that leg open, trying to make sure I don't get meat on there. Because I'll just flush it right off when I'm done. Okay, so this one's got just a little more. You don't want to take off all that meat. I just want to take off some of the little bit bigger chunks. There, that, that's it. So that little bloodier stuff will dry right up. That's all you need to flush. It, it's very, very little on a weasel. So we'll get, I tur I'm just turned in with my fingers here. Get the legs sticking up. His back legs on the here. I'm just kind of making sure he's straight. Kind of. He's, again, he's not the biggest weasel in the world, so he's not even really going on my uh, board the greatest. Okay. I need to find myself a piece of like uh, door screen, but I looked around, I do not have one. So I actually pin the entire tail open. Uh, if I had a piece of like window screen, I would get it kind of split open and then just lay a window screen and just pin it a few places to kind of hold my tail open. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and just start pinning him. Again, it's a weasel it's not not a raccoon you don't got to get super carried away with pins either okay and I, i'm not super concerned that that's pulled like super wide open i want to lean those forward a little and i'm not like pulling the tail this way either i'm just kind of holding it open so i get one set in and then I kind of open it back up. I know some guys will like pleat their tail like you would do like a mink. I typically don't care. I just get it pinned open to make sure it's going to dry. See, and like if I had a piece of window screen, you know, once I get it to like that position, I, or, you know, I could just lay my window screen over the top of that and it would hold it open and let it dry. And I'm going maybe... Not quite every half an inch, probably every good three-eighths of an inch. I'm just going to do two more sets here. Oh, got my tail kind of going crooked. Okay. And then we'll pin open the very end down here. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of your way, out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. But all right, so you can see I got. I mean, I know that's a lot of pins because I don't really have nothing else to hold the. Uh... Okay, we're gonna turn him around, and I'm gonna pin the legs on this side, the back legs. And again, I'm not like pulling on him at all. I'm literally just kind of straightening him out and put my pin in. Okay. So I got four pins holding the legs. I got a few a bunch of pins holding the tail. I like this one here just to kind of keep it from sliding up. Last thing, the belly board. So what I did is I just kind of weaseled it between my two pins there and I'm kind of gently feeding it up through there. Like the neck is kind of tight. There we go. And I want it just so it sticks out the end so you can see it's all the way through there. I maybe could have left my front legs just a smidgen longer but I don't uh, really care about the front legs too much on a weasel. So, And there you go. That's a completed weasel. Um, he'll be dry probably in about a day. It don't take very long because, like I said, they're pretty thin-skinned. 
and he is ready to go. He'll be ready to sell tomorrow. Basically, he'll be ready to sell tomorrow afternoon. All right, I think that's all I got for you on the weasel. Like I said, pretty quick and easy video. I, you know, I, it wouldn't take me nearly this long if I wasn't videoing. You know, it would take me five minutes maybe to skin him, and it'd take me obviously like a minute to you know minute and a half to pin him. It wouldn't take very long at all. So. Um, you could put up with quite a few weasels in a short period of time if you have them. Um, leave them whole if you want to freeze them and then uh, put them all up at once or something like that. Freeze them whole and then skin them. You don't want to leave them in your freezer too long because like I said, this one here was only froze maybe a day or two days at the most. And his nose and face were already kind of freeze dried. Um, just the way you uh, put them in your freezer, you know, you can protect the head just a little bit on there. But freeze them whole. You don't want to skin them and then freeze them and then try and put them up because uh, they'll freeze dry. The pelt will freeze dry really quick on you. I did that a couple years ago and I couldn't get him on my actual stretcher anymore because it freeze dried the neck a little bit. So I couldn't actually slip them on. So uh, weasels are quick enough. Honestly, you should probably put them up the same day you catch them on thumb and put them up. But. You know, I understand that that isn't always possible for everyone. So, uh, but yeah, there he is. Like I said, I typically I'll go over here and we'll just hang him up in the rafters, hang him up on a nail, just like that. And like I said, he'll be ready to take off in a day. This guy's got probably three days left. So these guys too. All right guys, so my weasel is dry. I mean, basically, it only takes a day or two at the most, but he's more than dry. Uh, he's been on there for like three or four days. So the only thing I'll do is I'll just take a blue shop rag and just wipe him down just a little if it looks like he's got, you know, any kind of shiny or grease spots on him. So just like that. Okay. And then now we're just going to take the pins out. Pretty simple process here, so... Again, because I didn't push them in like that one, I just bumped it and it fell out. I didn't push them in like super hard, super tough, because again, it's a fairly thin board. So I got all the pins out of him. We're just gonna slowly pull out the belly board here. Gently do it. Okay, belly board is out. I kind of go right along them and just kind of fuff them a little bit where that belly board was at. And then I just give it just a little bit of a pull and bingo bango and like this red line that was where the uh, rat trap had him caught so that's why there's a little bit of blood there but and then you can kind of see i just take and just blow in there and it kind of fluffs him right up on the inside there all right that is one completed weasel start to finish easy peasy again i know this isn't a big weasel He's just, he's probably one of the smaller ones I've ever caught, but a weasel's a weasel. Again, like I said, a quick and easy video on how to put up a weasel. I know not a lot of guys catch them. I actually think there's way more weasels around than people give credit for. You know, even like right now, I got snow outside. There's fresh weasel tracks, you know, if you go look for them. Um, in places you may not uh, think, so. Uh, yeah, get out there, do a little scouting. Maybe you guys can find where you actually have weasel in your area, especially if you're in the northern parts like me where you got a little bit of snow. Um, culverts going under roads where it's grass on each side is typically where I catch my weasels at. Um, the thicker and taller the grass is and the bigger the grassy spot, the better it is. Um, yeah, again, that's about all I know about weasel trapping. I appreciate you guys watching Schmatz Outdoors. If you got any suggestions uh, that can help everyone out, leave them in the comments down below. Uh, more, more than here what you guys think about what I'm doing. Uh, and if you have comments that might help somebody else, like I said, we're all here to help each other. So please leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching Schmatz Outdoors.